Hey guys, Figurecraft here, and today we're going to finally be finishing off this month of the uh, shipment. Uh, seven. So, we're going to finally be doing the um, final um, stage of shipment seven, which is going to be issue 38. And today we're going to be uh, doing the next part, so get my screwdriver ready. All right, and I grab the pH one and I put it into the screwdriver. So now we got that ready. But we're going to need multiple things for this stage. So yeah, you're going to need your screwdriver. Going to need some tweezers. I'm going to go with the ESD 17 tweezers again. Um, you don't really need this, but I'm just going to you know have this just for a reference. Because we're not putting that on yet. You're going to need your issue 38 box. You're going to need your engine room assembly that you have assembled so far. And the last thing you're going to need is your motor box that you've built so far. So these are the things that you're going to need for this issue. And let me go ahead and look in this book to see what our next step is alright testing the motor so I'll grab my tweezers so I can read <laughs> in step one the next step is to check the orientation of the engines of your model you will need the PCB switch 38A the USB cable 38B and the gearbox motor and shaft assembled in issue 37 the switch can move to the left ahead and to the right astern in the center the motor will be switched off stop in the ahead position all three propeller shafts will rotate in the astern position only the two outer shafts will rotate and it's got an important advice here. You will need a power source such as a computer or a laptop, which I got my laptop right here. In order to plug in the USB to test the motor, you may be able to use a phone charger, but check the output is 5V and 1A or 2A. Alright. So, let me show you these instructions right here right fast. Let me set this up. And I'll show you this, what I was talking about. So, it's talking about right there. That's where it says you can test it. And it tells you the voltage that you need for everything. And then there's the ahead, stop, and astern on the little thing. But we're not going to be testing the gearbox because before I stuck that motor in there, I tested it anyway. And I know my motor's fine. I know it works. And I've already got this in the correct orientation. And I don't want to mess up the orientation. So we're going to skip that step. We're going to go straight to the next, which the next one is going to be putting that thing down to the engine room floor. So let me put you back down here. And then I'll do that in a minute. Just reading step two. Step two. Take the engine room assembly from issue 36. Thread the cable from the motor through the rectangular opening in the floor section. 36A. Top. Position the gearbox as shown above. 
so that the shaft 37D fits into the turbine base 36E and the side shafts 35J fit into the cogs in the outer corners of the gearbox. Take time to ensure it is correctly fitted. You may need to rotate the shafts 35J in order to fit them into the center of the cogs. Take care not to pull the shafts out of the thrust blocks flywheels. Okay. And then it says fix the gearbox in place with four AP screws. Right. There is no need to tighten them fully until the until you have finished testing the motor. Alright, so now we're gonna do that step. <sighs> And I've got all mine firmly aligned and everything. So let me see here if I can figure out how to get this done. So taking air, um, this thing is really huge too. And I've got a small workspace right now. So I should have thought about that before I did this. But we'll make it through. Alright, I'm going to turn the engine this way. Having this hanging off, let me tilt you down here so you can see what I'm talking about. Having this part hanging off, but I am going to support this because I don't want that just, you know, dangling like that. So I'm going to take our box 38. I'm going to set it about right there. And now that it is right there, I'm going to take, well first before I do this, I'm going to do something else. That I talked about with you before. So first I'm going to tilt the whole entire engine assembly up. I'm going to let it sit like that. I'm going to get you put up here so you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to remove, like I talked about before, these three screws that's holding the turbine block down to the floor so getting one screw out of the turbine block and getting the next screw out of the turbine block there's three screws here we got to remove okay and then I'm going to remove the final one which is good Okay, all three screws are removed from the turbine block. I'm going to flip it around here. And I'm going to show you the reason why I did that. Alright. So now, let me just put you back down here. So now we're going to remove the turbine block. And that's going to make it a whole lot easier to get this thing in. Believe me, it will. So the first thing that we got to do is I'm going to set the motor right there. Because the first thing we have to do is thread this very long cable through the floor. So that's why you want this thing to be elevated. So slowly I'm going to work on feeding this cable through the floor. Believe me, this is a very long cable. Okay. So I'm now grabbing the motor itself. Still feeding this cable through the floor. It's a very long cable. Taking your time with it. Just like that. And now we're going to set this down there for now because I got to check the engine's orientations right fast 
Because these things do like to turn on you. I ain't going to lie. They like to turn. So, first of all, I got to turn this one a bit to where the D-shaped on mine is facing down. Just like that. This one's got to be turned over to, to where the D-shape is facing kind of at an angle. So now that I've got this, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to remove that. Alright, and now we're going to slowly align these little rods into the motor and you can see with that thing not being in the middle this is going to make this much easier so give me a few seconds here to pull this engine back a bit because i gotta make sure we don't put no strain on this let me grab a smaller box because that one was too high okay that one will do. Now I'm going to work on aligning this gearbox with the engines. So this is not going to be an easy task at first. It's going to be hard. So just uh, bear with me here until I get it. Because you got to do one at a time. <laughs> Hang on a minute. We'll get it. Just take your time with it, like it says. I know it's going to get to the point where it is going to get frustrating, but believe me, take your time. Because I tell you, it's already starting to frustrate me, but I'm going to take my time with it. Because this is an important part. I just got to find the correct orientations, which is easier said than done. Just hang on a minute here. I'm going to remove that a bit. Oh, you crazy little engine. Making sure that these are fully engaged into the, the steam turbine. Yeah, that turned a bit. That's my problem right there. So this has got to be turned more that way. Taking their time, feeding the wire back down through the floor. We'll get it. Okay, we got one. One's good to go. So, we're just working on this second one. And, uh, I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, come on, get out of there. There. You go over there. I don't need you in there. Alright, we got it. We got them in. So now... That those are fully inlocked into the engines. I'm going to set that there. And I'm going to get the screws next to put into that thing. That was a little bit of a pain in the butt. But we got it. So we got another bag of AP screws. And we need four of these. We'll put that... Uh, that turbine block back on in a minute. So, getting into my bag. I grabbed three. I just need one more. The magnet grabbed three of them out of four. Alright, we'll keep that one on my screwdriver since I'll be using it. So, now that we've got this much done, okay, let me get you uh, uh, situated over here to where you can see what I'm going to be doing. I'll try to get you closer to the engine part itself. It's going to be hard to get all, I can't show you the process of me getting all these screws in because it's on the other side. And I'm going to put one right in here. Taking my time. Just at least, you know, get it started to where it holds in place. I'm going to put another one on the other side. 
I'm sorry I can't show you this. This is way over here. But you'll see the other side going in. Not fully tightening that down like it says. And then we're going to put one right here. Now I'm on the side where you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And then we're going to be putting another one in the back, which is the last screw. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to tighten them down fully because I'm pretty confident that mine's going to be okay because I went over so many checks with it. So I am going to go ahead and tighten these screws down. But I am going to go back and check them too to make sure that everything is firmly inserted into the engine. After I do this, Okay, so that's down there now. That's going nowhere. And that supports that back area a whole lot more because you saw before I put that on, that was flimsy. But this part back here is still flimsy, so be careful about that. But what I am going to do is I want to bring this up to my face. That fell out. That's okay. We'll get that back in. That won't be nothing to get back in. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to... Look at this and make sure that these rods are fully inserted into the motor, which it is, and it's fully inserted into the engine. Yeah, that's good. So these look good, so now what we're going to do is we're going to work on getting this little rod back into that spot. So we'll have to basically blindly put it back in there, but that's okay, because... I've already found it. Yeah, we turn it that way. And then we turn it this way. It should catch. Hang on a minute here. Maybe I didn't find it. Hang on a minute here, y'all. Oh, yeah. Maybe this was a bad idea to do it this way. Huh. We'll find out. Okay, that time it unlocked. I failed it in lock. Okay, that's unlocked in there. Yeah, that's unlocked in there. I can see it turning from the back. So now, I gotta get this, uh, how is that gonna go in there? Huh. That's pretty tight. Is that supposed to be like that? That is weird. Because that's way, way, way over. Huh. That's a new interesting problem we came across. That right there is good, but when I go to put this turbine block back down to the floor, I kid you not, that sucker is not going. That is really tight. So, 
what am I doing wrong here? That'd be my luck, it's gonna be a mismake. Oh man. Everything was going together fine until we came across that. Come on. I know it's inserted because I can look from the back and see that that rod is into the spot. But something ain't going right here. And I can't get that turbine block back on there. So, yeah, it's super tight. The, uh, the pole is too long. So, we hit a problem here. Because I know that is fully inserted. So, that sucks. Unless I can try my best to... Okay, that is that is a really tight fit, though. Is that really going to let that move? Because I don't see that happening, man. I mean, we're really snug against that, that part. And maybe it will move, we hope. But let me go ahead and insert these screws in here, and then I'm going to look at this. Because I, I kid you not, that is super tight. Let me just load up a screw into this screwdriver. So I can work on getting the first one in. Which is kind of hard to do, because I'm trying to hold a big piece. Oh, man. Okay, I got one screw in to hold it in place. But before I fully put all three screws in there, I do want to make sure that this thing is going to run. And, because I'm telling you, that is tight. It looks like it's still turning, though, when I turn it with my hand. So, maybe the motor's powerful enough to turn it. But that is really tight in there. But anyway, let me read our next step. <clears throat> that was a fight. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Okay, step three. Before testing, check that the connecting rods on the engine are aligned correctly. On the port engine, the connecting rods 5B move in and out in alternate pairs. First, third, and second, fourth. Make sure that the pairs are aligned with each other as follows. The actual position of the parts will depend on the rotation of the crankshaft. First, the first and third connecting rods may be farther out, left, or the second and fourth connecting rods may be farther out below. If, for example, the third connecting rod is pushed farther in than the first, then use a small screwdriver to gently ease them into alignment. Firmly or similarly on the starboard side Connecting rods 27F should be aligned in alternate pairs. Here's a note. Note, the connecting rods 5B and 27F should not be farther in that the inner edge of the gangway 32V on the port side 
34x on the starboard side. Okay, so that's talking about the engine alignment. And uh, I'll show you what it's talking about here in a minute. Hopefully that thing does not stick on me when we start up the engine. Only time will tell, though. But anyway, let me show you what we got here. So taking the phone right fast, I'm going to tilt you right here right fast. I'm going to show you this. This right here is the correct orientation you want for this side of the engine, the port engine. You want that orientation like that. And as you can see here on mine, where I did it earlier, the orientation on that side is correct. So we're good on that side. So let me set you here, and i got to turn this big sucker around, because we got to go to the, uh, what is it, starboard side? Yes, yeah, starboard side. i got to turn this big sucker around and set it here, and then I'll have to show you the starboard side. Okay. Now for the starboard side, it is right, I mean, there's two here, there it is. It is right there. And then when you look over here on my starboard side of the engine, you can see the orientation is correct. Now what it's talking about too far in, I'll show you this. I'm going to show you this with a pair of tweezers. Because these things will get hung if they're too far in. So, right here you can see when I'm moving this backwards. I'm going to do this just to show you. So taking this, just hang on a minute here. I got to do it with my hand. Okay, I pushed it all the way in. Now, what's going to happen here is if it's pushed all the way in, these things are built to lock in place when they're pushed all the way in. So if you have one pushed all the way in, take some tweezers and gently pull it out. That way it doesn't lock. So you want to basically go and check these because if they were pushed all the way in like I showed you, just take some tweezers and pull it out. And that unlocks it because they do lock. You've seen this before in my future videos too when I was building the engine. One went too far in on me and it locked. So you want to make sure to do that. That's what it's talking about. Make sure that they're not locked. So going around to the other side, I'm going to check it too. So just taking some tweezers like I showed you. I'm going to gently check these that one's good that one's not locked you want to check the ones that's in because i'll show you with this one this one will do the same thing if you let it well i can't do it that one that one's locked in place but yeah but on that other one you saw it was loose over there that one will lock if not careful so i can see now these ain't locked so we're good the orientations are good so now we're going to go to the last step of the build. Just hang on here a minute and I'll situate you back down to the engine. Now I'll zoom you out too. Got you too far zoomed in. Alright. Now for our last page we're reading. You are now ready for the test run. Connecting the motor cable to the moat socket on the PCB switch 38A and fit the USB-C end of the 38B cable into the socket at the end of the PCB switch. The PCB ensure that the switch is in the stop position. Connecting the USB cable to the USB socket of a laptop or of a desktop or laptop computer or to a 5V, 1A, or 2A power supply, e.g. a phone charger. Once the power supply is connected, move the switch to a head and let it run for 30 seconds. Then check that it is working in the astern position. Alright, we're now ready to finally 
get this engine up and going and I'm I am a little nervous and I am a little excited too because I've been dying to see this uh, happen so let me just go ahead and get these parts out of the box we're going to need a cord first and I'm going to move some of this stuff out of the way a bit set that there I gotta get this wire out from under the engine okay all right and now I'm going to grab our PCB switch which is right there now the way this works let me look in the book so I don't tell you wrong okay I got it let me just figure out what I did with my tweezers so I can point this out to you uh, I'm always losing those things there we go okay on the PCB switch where the plug is and where the switch is this is the ahead position towards the plug is the ahead position that's forward towards the back where the um, USB cable plugs in is the astern position that's backward and in the middle it'll be on stop so I'm now checking mine making sure that it's in the middle which it is and now I'm going to do the part where let me twitch you down here so you can see what I'm going to do I'm going to take the USB cable locating the port in my laptop I'm going to go ahead and plug it in so we're good and now I'm going to take the other end taking the switch I'm going to plug it in like so and now I'm going to take the very long cable wire Finding the correct location, I'm going to plug it in like so. I'm not going to put it all the way in there because I want to get it back out. But now we're ready. Okay, so now if I put this in the ahead position, you're fixing to see what I'm going to see. So let me get you situated here. Let's hope and pray to God that this works. So I'm getting ready to do this, making sure there's no tension on the engine. So I'm now going to do the ahead position to see how this runs.